In this video, I'm going to take you through some of the basics of Ethernet Layer 2 networking. And we're going to take a little trip back in time here and think about kind of how Ethernet has evolved over the years. And that'll really help us to gain a better understanding of where we are right now. So some of you might be old enough to remember this, and, and I'm probably exposing how old I am <laughs> by covering this, but when Ethernet first came out, it was called Carrier Sense Multiple Access Collision Detect. That was kind of the first iteration of this type of Layer 2 network. So let's talk about how that worked. So what we would have with Carrier Sense Multiple Access Collision Detect is essentially we would have this long cable, right? We'd have a long cable, like a coaxial cable, right? The kind you hook up your cable TV to. And when I wanted to go ahead and deploy a new node on my network, I would connect it to that cable. So what we'd actually use is something that we used to call a vampire tap, right? Here's my new machine and another machine and another machine and I'm connecting all of these machines to my network. And I'm doing so by simply tapping into this shared wire, right? the shared physical cable that all of these workstations are using. So here I've labeled my four stations, one, two, three, and four, and they're all using vampire taps. They're tapped into this shared wire. And when one of these nodes wanted to communicate on the network, Here's the process that it would go through. So let's say node one had some sort of traffic that it needed to transmit. Well, node one would basically shout onto the network, hey, I've got something I need to send. I've got something I need to send and I'm going to go ahead and send it. Well, if node three just so happened to be sending information at the same time, we would have what's called a collision. Right? Two machines weren't allowed to transmit at the same time like this. And this is why we needed carrier sense multiple access collision detect. Our network would need to be able to basically de detect the fact that two machines had tried to communicate at the same time. And what would happen then is it would set like a random timer for machine one and a random timer for machine three. And eventually they try to transmit that data again. Okay, so that was kind of the beginning point for ethernet. Okay, so with that kind of configuration, collisions were pretty prevalent, right? And we ended up with a lot of overhead and really it's just not an efficient way to transmit traffic across the network. So we had to come up with something better. It also wasn't really efficient to have to tap into this shared wire every single time you needed to connect a new machine. And so along came hubs. Right? And hubs were kind of like the next generation in local area networks. So hubs changed the way that our network looked. Instead of having this shared wire down the middle of our network with a hub, what we now have is this box. It looks kind of like a switch, right? If you're used to seeing switches, it looks kind of like a switch where it's got all these ports that my machines can plug into. So now when I go and deploy a new host, I don't have to tap into a wire. I can simply deploy my new host system and go ahead and, and connect it up to a port on that hub and now my machine will be able to communicate but i still had the same problem with collisions right if i have two machines connected to a hub and they attempt to communicate at the same time i'm going to have a collision so that led to this need for something better yet again and what we came up with that's better than that is an ethernet switch. And the key to switching is something called the MAC address table. So for each of these virtual machines that we see here, they're going to have a unique MAC address. Every machine on an ethernet network has a unique MAC address. And, and only one machine can have that MAC. On our old physical computers, 
it was something that was burned into the physical adapter that was not changeable, right? And you can kind of think of our virtual machines the same way. They have this MAC address assigned and, and it cannot be changed. So for the moment, let's just think of this in terms of physical computers. I have two physical computers plugged into a switch. And the first computer has MAC address 1, and the second computer has MAC address 2. And let's say that MAC address 1 and MAC address 2, that these two machines want to transmit some traffic at the same time. And let's say that they both want to communicate with a machine that has MAC address 3. So let's add one more machine to our equation here. Here's a third machine, and it's got yet another unique MAC address. So both of these machines want to communicate with this device that has MAC 3. Well, as we saw in our, our previous generations with the hub or with that just long stretched coax cable, that would have resulted in a collision. If both Mac 1 and Mac 2 tried to transmit at the same time, we would have had a collision. What a layer 2 switch does is it utilizes a Mac address table to avoid those collisions. So let's say that, that the first machine, Mac 1, whatever machine has Mac 1, goes to transmit this data. And the destination address is Mac 3. Well, that data is going to flow into my Ethernet switch the Ethernet switch will receive it and it'll store that frame in memory, or at least that's how switches used to work. Now they don't really do that so much anymore. But it'll store that frame, that layer two frame in memory, and it'll look up this destination address, which is MAC3. I'll say, okay, MAC3 is located on this port. So we'll go ahead and we'll take that Ethernet traffic and we'll switch it over to that port and it'll reach its destination. And so the machine that has Mac 2 could potentially be transmitting data at the exact same time. And that frame will also get received in memory. And the switch will look up the destination Mac address in its Mac address table and it'll forward it out the appropriate port. So in this scenario, our, our MAC address table will look sort of like this. Here you can see I've numbered all of my ports on my switch, port 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And so as these devices are sending and receiving traffic, the switch will start to build its MAC address table. Let's say, for example, the machine that has MAC address 1 transmits some Ethernet frame. Well, when that frame arrives at the switch, the switch will say, I just got a frame from Mac 1 on port 6. So now that this traffic has come in from Mac 1, and the switch saw that traffic arrive from Mac 1 on port 6, the switch will recognize, hey, I've got a device with Mac 1 that's connected to port 6. Let me go ahead and update my MAC address table. So at this point, the switch will add that entry to its MAC address table. And now in the future, if it ever gets a frame that's destined for MAC 1, it'll know, hey, I have to forward that frame out port 6. You know, and it'll learn MAC 2 the same way. If some frame comes into the switch, hits port 5 from source MAC, MAC 2, it'll now associate MAC 2 with port 5 and MAC 3 with port 3. And it'll build up this MAC address table so that it has the ability to receive a frame, store it, analyze it against the MAC address table, and then forward it to the appropriate Ethernet port. So that's the job of my Layer 2 switch. That's the most basic function of the Layer 2 switch. There's a lot of other things that a Layer 2 switch does as well, like ARPs and spanning tree and stuff like that. We'll learn about those in upcoming lessons. But at the most basic level, that's what my Layer 2 switch does.